From Nashville's WSM Radio, the original home of the Grand Ole Opry, this is a Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Maddow said in this episode of our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast, we sit down with Easton Corbin. Easton's got brand new music. Let's do Country Right. It's been a while since we've had a new Easton Corbin album. We would look back to his first hit, a little more country than that, and his first time at the Grand Ole Opry. A lot of interesting conversation with our friend Easton Corbin. I hope you enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. A couple of minutes after 9 o'clock, and an old friend just sat down with a cup of coffee in his hand. Easton Corbin, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? All right, Muscles. Look well, at you. I, I don't know about that. Man. I'm good trying. Good night. But, you know. <laughs> you feeling okay over there? You uh, intimidated? What's going yes, on? Yes, I am, Is frankly. that what it is? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm disappointed wondering. in myself and the fact that... <laughs> I, I could do better, but I just well, don't. And well, then we I see can, somebody man. who is, and it just uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing me down. Okay. Man. Oh That's no, good. I didn't. Mean <laughs> Happy to have you. Hey, good to be here. <laughs> Let's do country right. Yes, Finally, sir. the new album, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So excited about this! I went back in my archive and I found it. Uh, it was <laughs> it was in April of last year. Easton Corbin, I Can't Decide, was my pick of the week. Right. I pick one yeah. song each week. And there was this forthcoming album, forthcoming album. And now, Let's Do Country Right is done. I, I think we were here around that time. Wasn't yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, sure. yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I remember that. Well, tell us about Let's Do Country Right. Because it's been a minute, so it's, you've had lots of time to think about it. Absolutely. You know, it's it's crazy. You know, these it's it's been a... For everybody, a strange last few, a couple years, you right. know, mm-hmm. but, but for me, I, I took that opportunity to really go back and, and take my time and really just write songs that I love. And, you know, they, they say that, you know, you have your whole life to write for your first record. And, uh, then after that, it's just boom, 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 mm-hmm. one after the other. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I can relate to that, but these last few years, I just kind of took my time and just kind of got back to the music that I love and, and really made me want to do this for a living, you know? That's the thing. No pressure. To, well, to get back and figure out why you started in the first Absolutely. place. Yeah. That's special. Kind of recalibrate a little bit. Yeah. You know? Sitting right there in that spot about 10 days ago was one Rory Feek. Oh, yeah. Mm. A little hey, more country than Thank that. God for him. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. <laughs> that changed your world, didn't it? It sure did. It sure did. Thank God. Were you working at Ace Hardware then when, when I, that record broke? I w- or had you... You had, know what? I remember I got my record deal, and I think I kept my job probably for close to a year after that you know because i because there wasn't really anything going on you know negotiating a record deal and it just it takes time Mm -hmm. so i remember i kept my job up until i started recording and at that point you know i was so busy i you know i couldn't keep it but uh i literally it's three miles from here in donaldson no kidding at ace harbor yeah yeah. So what was your specialty if I come into Ace Hardware? Uh, or I don't know you if just... I had a specialty. It's just you do whatever you do, you know. It's yeah. like if the bathrooms need to be clean, go clean the bathrooms, take out the trash, help a customer. It's like all hands on deck. Okay. That's where I get all my paint. Is it? They're real helpful yeah. with paint samples well, and hey. telling you what to look for. You know, yeah. Speaking of the Opry, you know, I remember Jeannie Seeley used to always come in. Of course, and I would load stuff up for her and things like that. So, yeah, I remember that. That's because she was she, had, she was hot for you. I just got a feeling. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> Ace is the place where the help for hardware. There man. we go. Well, there yeah. <laughs> I just I always remember that. You know? Was she sweet? Of course she oh, was. Nice. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Uh, well, the last time that we talked, I remember you were telling me you had like a whole. You were learning how to moonshine. I Once did, upon yeah, a yeah. time, you know, somebody, you made a still. Something, well, no, a guy made a still. Okay, for me, okay, and, that was and, it. No, I was making some liquor and stuff, <laughs> and uh, it was almost it was the, legit. It was legit. Yeah, yeah. It was the like Bureau was, of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Well, so let's yeah. go. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, like he was going to follow that quote here. with, uh, "No, a guy made a still for me." Yeah, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to jail now, guys. Sorry. Well, but that was like a passion for a while. Yeah, it was. It was pretty cool to to be able to make that, and I went through that for a little bit. But it just it takes. So I live in town, mm-hmm. so it takes a lot of room to make that stuff because you got a lot of water and stuff involved, and it just makes a mess if you don't have somewhere to drain the water. So I, I had a farm that uh, it didn't belong to me. It was a buddy of mine, and I would take it out there because there's plenty of room. 
and uh, and an alibi. Yeah. yeah, and an alibi. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You and his, bu- his buddy at some point goes, "Officer, I promise you, I had no idea I had no there idea was a still on this property. I, I never <laughs> seen the man yeah. before." So, so you mentioned taking time off, kind of regrouping. Everything. Did you find at one point the business of the music business takes away all the fun of? being in the music business? Because, I mean, the, the reason we get in, anybody does any of this kind of stuff is because it's, it's fun to begin it's, with. It's I fun. Mean, you know? A- absolutely. You know, it, it's one of those things where you get into it, like you said, because it's fun, you mm-hmm. love playing, you love singing, but there is a business behind mm-hmm. it. You know, so that's, <laughs> there. there's, you know, trade-offs yeah. on that yeah. stuff, you know. And when I say we took off, I mean, we were still working a mm-hmm. bunch when we could, mm-hmm. uh, especially during COVID, you know, when you could. Mm. Um, so we were still working, but 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 time at home, we had a lot more. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just taking that time to write and, and, you know, no pressure. I'm curious, or most artists remember exactly where they were because most were on the road or preparing to go out on the road when they got the word that COVID had kicked in and the industry was shutting down. Where sure. were you? Do you recall? Man, I don't remember exactly where I was at, honestly. Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I, I just thought maybe that was a, a particular memory. So who is uh, Pee Wee Melton in your life? Pee Wee Melton, man. I tell you what, uh, he's the reason I play guitar. He, uh, It's funny. I, I started taking guitar lessons at a place called Dixie Music in Old Town, Florida. And uh, he was a guitar player from Greenville, South Carolina, and a session player and played in bands for years. And uh, for some reason, he decided to retire to a little place called Steenhatchee, Florida, which wasn't far from Old Town. And uh, he just started teaching guitar at the, at the music store. And, and uh, yeah, I met him, and uh, he's the reason I play guitar. How much were lessons, do you recall, what your parents paid? I, I, I think it was like 20 bucks or something or less. Yeah. So it seems pretty cheap these days. I don't know. <laughs> I, I went there for years, man. Such a great guy. Great guy. Well, uh, how about marry that girl? Set it up for us, and we're going to roll it. Yeah, it's a little song that uh, me, Shane Miner, Adam Craig, Wade Kirby wrote, and uh, we just kind of started off the session just like a lot of writing sessions, just catching up and, and having a good time. And, and I don't know how Adam got onto it, but uh, he started talking about you know when he met his wife, and you know he uh, he didn't know her, but when he met her, he's like, he's like man, I knew I was going to marry that girl, and I was like, hmm. A light come on. I was like, we might need to write that one. <laughs> Something everybody can relate to, hopefully. Yeah. And the finished result is all over the world right now. There you go. WSM Radio, Circle Television, Easton Corbin in studio this morning. The first time that I met her, she was pouring shots of rum. Told me that her cousin just turned 21. She took my hand and said we're dancing When they played her favorite song We didn't stop till everybody else was gone Easton Corbin, 916 in studio, new music, full album just out. Let's do country right. You know, we haven't been doing country right a lot of people, traditionalists, would say, in a while. So thank you. Yeah, I, I, I do what I can, you know. I, I, I stay true to who I am and my roots, and you know, I, I think that I think that uh, album title kind of sets the tone for the whole record. Absolutely, like. yeah. Trenton, Florida, is home for you. Tell us a little bit about growing up. Your mom and daddy, what did they do? And how yeah. did you get into the music business? You know, it's funny. I, I, I grew up, I, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. Uh, they had a big part of my life, my dad's parents, and on a small cattle farm. And, you know, through that, I, I was part of FFA and 4-H and showing cattle and things like that. But my dad, uh, his occupation, he, was a, he, he retired uh, as a prison guard. He did that for about 30 years, and my mom's a retired nurse. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great place to grow up. I wouldn't trade it for the world. You're rocking American cattle company gear this morning. Is that yours or it actually is? Yeah. It's a, it's a part of a company, uh, called rural cloth and we launched American cattle company with that. Yes, sir. Your granddaddy's proud. I, I would hope so. <laughs> what breed? Uh, you show, uh, showing we cattle? had a lot of Brangus cattle, which okay. is Angus and, and, and Brahma crossed, mm-hmm. uh, a, a lot of that. They, they forage real good down in Florida with the heat and stuff. Oh, David and Howard Bellamy come in here and they say, those Ramas will go out there on the hottest day of summer and lay down in the sun. Oh, yeah. They, they forward, yeah. Part lizard. They, you know, they, of course, they came from India originally, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. They're an Indian breed that made their way to they get a little state. They get a little testy when they got a calf. You know, if you get them closed in too much, they can 
<laughs> they can get a little in, uh, emotional. Mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. No. Kind of oh, <laughs> yeah. they, they'll check you off if you ain't careful. <laughs> I promise you. Oh, I love that. If you get them enclosed too much, <laughs> I promise you. Oh. you. You know, throughout the years, anytime Easton's in studio, we always love talking football too. But your Gators and my Hurricanes have uh, it's not been much to talk about Man, lately. Yeah, it ain't been much to brag about. I promise what you. What would you rather talk about, but, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Kansas City? There you go. But, well, yeah. but as a good fan, you stick with them. Oh, yeah. Do the, you yeah. know, yeah. ups and downs. That's so who do you like uh, it, it, as we approach the Super Bowl with the playoffs, uh, you know, championships this coming weekend? I was talking to my buddy, and I was like, man, I just don't have much in it, mm-hmm. you know, honestly. Mm-hmm. I guess since Cassie's over here, we're going to pull for the 49ers because she's a California girl. So okay. We'll, we'll, we'll pull with her. So All right. how about that? There you go. Are you going to play for us? We'll play for you. What are you going to do? Well, we might as well. You, you're talking about Roy Lee? Yeah. yeah. He was in here and uh, – Thank God for him because I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for his Wynn song. Barbel was in on who who else? Roy Feek, Wynn Barbel. Was it Roy Lee here or Wynn Barbel was here? No, no, Roy, Roy was okay. here. Yeah. But, but yeah. Rory, Wynn, and, and Don Poitras. Thank you. Yep. Couldn't remember sure the third. Was. Yep. And uh, they they started it all for me. Thank God right. they wrote a little more country now. So give us the backstory. How do you get this song? Where do you remember hearing it the very first time? You know, Carson Chamberlain, my producer at the time, uh, he he brought it to me, and I think. I think that song had been around four or five years, I think. Maybe a little bit longer. I think even longer than yeah. that. Maybe a decade. It, it, it probably said it got was. passed on a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that's a testament sometimes that uh, songs find their homes. Mm-hmm. And uh, that one sure did for me. Yeah. So, Well, let's remember. Well, reminisce. Let's remember. All right. Get nostalgic for a little while. It's a little early for a musician, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That you've heard those three words from others, but they feel flat. But this ring ain't something that I mean to give you and then take back. I'm a little more country in life. I'm a little more country in life. I'm a little more country in life. We made it through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a moment in time that'll get you a slot on the Grand Ole Opry. It now, sure isn't will. It? Huh? What do you remember about that night, the first you know, time you played the Opry? Who was there? That was really a, a full circle moment for me, and uh, no pun intended, but uh, it really was because, uh, you know, I grew up, like I said, with my grandparents a lot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, our Saturday nights always consisted of, I think it was like starting with Hee Haw and then. Uh, the opera backstage, you know, they'd have 30 minutes there and then they'd have 30 minutes of the Opry. And, uh, that was, and, and then after that was a Statler brothers show that they had. And, uh, that was what every Saturday night consisted of. So when I actually got to play the Opry, um, for the first time, they got to come up and be part of that. And, and, you know, that, that, that was a really a special night for sure. Uh, when I say full circle, that's truly mm-hmm. You know what that was. Was that the first time they'd seen it live? That's the first time they'd ever been there live. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. I like your viewing much better than mine. I was forced to watch the Lawrence Welk show as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long one hour. Is That's that, is a, that okay? I don't know. I, yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. The start the bubble machine, the yeah, Charlie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's before my time. <laughs> I don't know. But, but it, it really was, you know, uh, that for, you know, especially my grandparents, you know, that was a Super Bowl of What are their names? Entertainment. Uh Cecil and Nell Corbin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They uh are not with us anymore, but uh yeah, they were a big part of my life for sure. Where did Easton come from? It's Dan, isn't it? Or Dan? Well, my first name's Dan, Easton Corbin, and but my dad is named Dan, so for some reason they always called me Easton uh ever since I can remember. And uh, But it was such an instantly recognizable and easy to remember name, Kelly, when you were it, it was so coming. funny oh, as yeah. a kid I didn't appreciate having the unique name because I, I got to thinking, you know, how you go in the Jiffy store sometime and you yeah. see like the, the kiosk uh, with like the, the name tags. You never well, got a keychain. I never, I, I never had a keychain because <laughs> Easton wasn't on. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> so I, I didn't appreciate it until, you know, it's like, I, you know, I'm glad they named me Easton. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, back then I wanted to be like, a regular name, you know, that you can find on the keychain or something. Well, and you know, when you became a superstar, it was much easier to get EastonCorbin.com than it would have been like, you know. Yeah, John Smith. Dan Smith, yeah. Dan Smith, yeah. yeah. You got it. All right, so we're going to close with I Can't Decide. I remember making this a pick of the week, year and a half, probably close to it now, ago. 
And Red Akins, Ashley Gorley, you and Wade, Wade Kirby. Kirby. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. We uh, we walked in there, and of course, everybody's getting out their computers and stuff. Of course, I didn't show up on computer because I just don't. And uh, I got my phone, I guess, on me. And of course, Wade's always got a guitar or something in the studio. We ride in. And of course, everybody else shows up one except for Red Akins. He, you know, he Red style. He shows up with nothing, <laughs> and uh, God bless him. But uh, he comes in there, and we're all kind of talking, and and he's like. What about I can't decide? And uh, Ash is like, where'd you come up with that? He said, oh, boys, I just keep it up here. Pointing oh, at his head. God. Of course, red fashion, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. Sounds like <laughs> just, it. Just keep it so up here. So for, for you struggling songwriters in Nashville, please keep in mind that you can show up with nothing and wind up as, as a songwriter. you got a good idea. Songwriters as Hall as of Fame. you got a good idea. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Easton, thanks for coming to see us this morning, pal. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's always and a pleasure. The the new album is available wherever you buy. Download or stream your favorite music. Let's do country right, and nobody does it any writer than Easton. You're on 650 AM WSN. You're watching all over the world on Circle TV. Black dress, high heels, showing you all downtown. Footprints, windshield, watching the sun go down. Front porch, hair back. Sipping a sweet iced tea, black top, dirt road, it all sounds good to me. Yeah, baby. Thanks for listening to the Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please leave us a five-star review. This podcast was produced through the facilities of WSM Radio in Nashville, Tennessee. The hosts of Coffee, Country, and Cody are Bill Cody, Charlie Matos, and Kelly Sutton. Producer, Eric Markham. WSM General Manager and Director of Content and Programming, J. Patrick Tittle. Copyright 2023. Opry Entertainment Group Holdings, LLC.